All right, guys. Um, today I'm making the third video in my installment of the SMP video series. Hopefully, I'll be able to get to the fourth. <laughs> um, this video will be about modifications and some maintenance required for your SMP system. So, I'll get right into it. We'll start with maintenance because maintenance is pretty easy for the most part. Um, step number one is to buy some Tech T Gun Sav Premium Lubricant. Comes in this little small red case, should be about $10. It's just a paste based grease. Uh, I'm not going to open it right now because it's messy. However, it's just a normal like grease that you would use to lubricate your O-rings. And the O-rings you have to lubricate are the following. So there's two on your nozzle. One in front right here and one at the base. Sorry about that. One at the base right here, guys. So first, second. And then there's two more. There's one right inside of the cylinder of the SMP itself. Try to angle that so you can see. Right inside, see that black thing shining when I rotate? That's an O-ring right inside this circle. You can see it right there. And then there's an O-ring right here. This one shouldn't need much greasing because nothing's moving on it friction-wise. However, you don't want to let it dry out. Uh, after that, maintenance is usually, like, that's really all you have to keep doing with the SMP. It's pretty easy. Um, the only other maintenance you would really have to do is if something actually breaks. It's really not maintenance. It's more fixing. And I will get into that later. So for modifications for the SMP to make sure that it works, there's actually a lot of stuff you can run into that people don't know about or don't think about right away. I'm going to try and get as much information in this video as I possibly can. I definitely will not be going over every single modification and every single fix there is for the SMP. Mostly because every single install and every single gun is a little bit different and you will always find slightly different problems with each one. Um, so the first one I'm going to go over is selector switches because it's right in front of me and I can see it. So, um, if you can't already see, there is tape around my base of my selector switch. And what happens is on the SMP, there's a little black switch right there. And that switch controls semi and full auto. And what happens is that with some guns, when you actually put the body, sorry, when you actually put the gearbox shell into the body, um, the selector plate moves and it can actually get pulled upward a little bit. So what happens sometimes is that either safe and semi, sorry, not safe and heavy, this is safe, this is semi, this is auto. Semi and auto sometimes don't work at all. Which would mean it would be like semi-semi, even though you have it set to shoot semi-auto. Or it works outside the um, body of the gun. And when you put it inside the body, full auto might not become engaged. So what you have to do is just layer electrical or scotch tape or a mix of both like I did around this base of the selector plate to make sure that it's contacting that black switch right there. Um... It, it's, a, it's a trial and error process. You basically got to take the safety mechanism out, take the selector plate out, wrap one layer of tape, put it all back together, and try it. If it doesn't work, repeat, add another layer of tape, and you have to just keep doing that until you get one where semi-auto works and full auto works. Um, that modification isn't too common. However, it, it does come up fairly often. I mean, I don't want to... It, it, it's very random because it can happen in some gun. So, for example, this is an AK Masada. Um, my friend installed one into an AK Masada, and he didn't have to do this modification. I did, so it's not really based on gun. It's more random airsoft tolerances. Whenever something doesn't fit together perfectly, you might have to have this modification. Um, let's get going on the second modification. Second one is actually very uncommon from what I've been told. However, this is the back of the cylinder window. The SMP fits right into here, into this section. Sometimes 
sorry, it, it fits right into this section. It replaces the whole cylinder assembly. Sometimes you actually have to shave down this back piece on both sides of the shell to make sure the SMP can fit. I don't have to do this. I don't hear about it often. However, I have heard about it before. So I know that it's something, if your SMP isn't fitting in right, you want to look for this piece to make sure it's not getting pinched here. And you also want to look at this piece right here to make sure that this um, bolt that sticks out, that goes right here where the cylinder head would have gone. Sometimes this can be too thin for the gearbox shells, not too thin, too tight, sorry, for the gearbox shells extension piece right here. And you actually have to shave this down a little smaller so the SMP can fit. Um, aside from those two modifications, that's usually it for the, oh, sorry, one more thing, gearbox shell, I'm getting ahead of myself. This area back here, not all gearbox shells have this area open. Some gearbox shells have a reinforcement piece in this area that if you wanted to rear wire your gun, and what that means is put your wiring, um, Data cable, sorry, if you want to put your data cable out to the buffer tube in the stock of your gun and put your FCU and battery there, and your gearbox happens to have the reinforcement here, you have to shave that reinforcement down to make room for the data cable. Now, that's usually the end of the more common modifications you'll find on your gearbox. Um, next, I want to talk about alignment. So... Rich Lort has a very, very, very good video of alignment. Um, I think it's posted on YouTube and in the file section in the SMP Onus group on Facebook. So I'm going to touch this very briefly. If you want a more in-depth video on how to check it, go look at his video. It's very, very good. However, this is the lower receiver. I happen to have a Masada lower receiver. It works. It's the same for any gun. So what happens is when you put your gearbox shell into the lower receiver sometimes what happens is your air nozzle actually does not line up straight it might be tilted to the right it might be sh um, shifted to the right it might be tilted up it might be shifted up this is called an alignment issue so I think M Mikey has a really good video on this for AEGs it's the same concept for this However, Rich Lord does have a video with the SMP specifically, so that's the one I would recommend watching. Um, basically, what you want to do is just add material to... So, for example, if your alignment, if your air nozzle is sticking too far up, you want to add material to the top of the gearbox shell to push it back down. If it's too far down, you want to add material to the bottom of the gearbox shell to shim it upward. And same for left or right. If it's to the right, you want to add material on the right side. And if it's to the left, you want to add material on that side to push it back center. Um, there are different ways you can do this, though, which is what I wanted to talk about. The most, com the, the easiest way to um, move your gearbox shell is just to simply add material. Electrical tape, Velcro, um, screwing a bolt or a screw into the side of the gearbox. Adding plastic. Um, to one of the sides to shim it out. Anything can really work. However, sometimes you don't need to add material. So for a standard gearbox shell to go into the lower receiver, you have two body pins, one here and one here. And actually, no, sorry, it's here and here, my bad. And these body pins lock the gearbox into place in the lower receiver. However, you also have two screws down here for the grip and a screw in the back for your spring guide and buffer tube. Now what I recommend doing when you install a gearbox into an SMP, sorry when you install a gearbox with an SMP into it, into a gun, I recommend putting the body pins in first, after that screwing on the grip screws and finally screwing on the buffer tube screw. The reason why I say this, I install the same, I do the same process for my AEGs for the last three or four years. Um, it just helps get a more consistent alignment. 
And if you've ever opened an AEG before and you did an order that wasn't this way, I'm sure you've run into a problem where you're trying to put your pins in and one of them just doesn't seem that, like it wants to fit or line up. That's because with the tolerances, especially when you have off-brand grips or different buffer tubes or different spring guide or anything, even with the stock setup sometimes, the screws down here and right here can actually pull the gearbox bias towards one direction. Um, so what you want to do is actually line up the pins first lock the gearbox in place, and then you screw in the grip screws to tighten it down, and then you screw in the buffer tube screw. The reason why you do the buffer tube screw after the grip screws is because sometimes the buffer tube screw actually will tilt the gearbox slightly up. So if you happen to have an alignment issue where it is slightly downward, you can just use the buffer tube screw to correct that without adding any material in at all. And if the buffer, if you have no alignment issue, you screw the buffer tube screw tight enough where it locks onto place, but you don't over tighten it to where it would go up. Now, again, if you didn't understand any of that part on alignment or you want a better explanation, go see either Mikey's or Rich Lort's video and that will help you out a lot. Um, moving on to the, I think the, the trigger. So standardized SMPs use a normal AEG trigger and normally there's no problems at all. However, if you wanted to use an upgrade trigger or a speed trigger, you may run into modifications. Actually, you, you will run into modifications needed. Um, Prometheus straight triggers have a built-in screw right here that goes that way. So their screw is right here on the trigger and it goes through this way and it acts as a built-in hard stop. Um, speed brand triggers have a screw right here as seen on mine that goes downward and it helps for a hair trigger where it sets the trigger position closer and closer to actually activating the micro switch. And retro arms triggers don't have either set screw I believe they're just fancy triggers um, so if you want to make a speed trigger or a hair trigger and you wanted to use one of these aftermarket triggers to do so they are actually a little different than stock triggers where they're missing material right let me see if I can get it right around here let me just get this off my sorry I magnetized my tools and it's biting me in the butt now um, right here, there's actually missing material on these triggers. Try and get better light for you guys. Sorry about that. Here we go. Perfect. There's missing material right here on these triggers. On stock triggers, this material is not missing. It, it's actually a little thicker in the back, and it goes all the way down to where the screw is. Um, what this does is when you pull the trigger in the gearbox... Normally, the material that's here in a stock trigger hits the gearbox shell and it stops the trigger. Since it's not here, this material doesn't hit the gearbox shell until much later and the trigger actually extends farther forward than a normal trigger would. And what that can do is think about a normal trigger um, stopping right about here after it activates the micro switch. The speed triggers go all the way in, and they actually go further in, they jam up and they smack the unit every single time because there is no hard stop on them. What you need to do is you need to take, there's a lot of ways you can do this. I drilled and tapped a screw into place that extends out of my gearbox, and what happens is when I pull my trigger, my trigger now hits this screw, and it forces it to stop which forces it to stop um, the micro switch here and it doesn't cause any, sorry, right here, it doesn't cause any problems as opposed to going all the way forward like it normally does. Other modifications you might have to do is you might have to shave down the back side of it. Uh, mine was a little too thick to fit over this micro switch box um, however, I've heard other ones weren't, so you might have to do that, you might not. And 
with these triggers, you also might have to shim them. It depends on the gearbox shell, really. But for example, my gearbox shell and this trigger left it very loose. And there was actually, when it was all installed, up and down movement with the trigger. So I just took normal AEG shims and I put them on the top of the trigger to shim it out and get rid of that movement. And the reason why I put them on the top is because of the up and down movement, the bottom of the trigger would actually move off the micro switch. So when I pulled it, nothing would happen. So if it shims on the top, it forces the trigger back down to where it can't move anymore and it stays on the micro switch. Um, I think those are the only modifications you really need to do. And then if you wanted a hair trigger and you have this Speed Airsoft brand trigger, all you have to do is that screw right there in the center of the screen, tighten that down and it will extend further and further. And you'd have to play with it and get the correct length where it's not. If you tighten it too far, it will start all the way here and it will activate your trigger um, too early. And if you tighten it not far enough, you won't get the actual speed hair, hair trigger effect out of it. So you have to keep tightening that screw down until you get a trigger pull that you like the length of. And it actually works, meaning that it doesn't activate the micro switch right away. If you don't have a speed airsoft trigger with the screw, all you have to do is add material to the trigger where that screw is on this one. So if you have a normal trigger or if you have a retro arms trigger or a Prometheus straight trigger, you just have to add material right here and then shave away the material to get your desired um, pull distance. Um, I think that just about wraps it up, guys. Um, the only other modifications you might have to make are to your gun itself. And here's an example of modification I had to make on an ANK Masada. Um, normally on these Masadas, the gearbox sits right here and the wiring goes up above the bolt catch through a hole in the top and then back down into the handguard. The data cable does not fit through the hole. So what you have to do is actually grind away or mill out a little housing right here. Normally this is flat across like on this side, but you have to grind away an area so that the, the data cable can now go from the gearbox Instead of going up through the hole, it goes underneath into the hole you created and then up into the handguard. And that fixes your data cable problem. Um, the only issue with this is that you kind of have to grind and test, grind and test, grind and test to make sure you ground a deep enough hole where the data cable is not pinched. Because the lower receiver locks on right here. And if you don't grind the hole deep enough, you will pinch the data cable. And other than that, guys, it's more just troubleshooting issues, not necessarily modifications. Um, if you're having any issues, post in the group. I'm sure people will be able to answer your questions for you. And if you have any issues specifically you want to ask me, um, I will be glad to help you to the fullest extent that I'm able to. And I hope you guys have a nice day. hope you guys can get all your issues fixed out with your SMPs, and I hope that everything works out for you in the end because I am having an issue right now and I'm sure I'll update you guys on that in another video. So I will see you then.